Armand here to talk about the nodes moving on to the Cancer Capricorn axis, which happens on or about November 6th of 2018. I say on or about because the nodes are slippery little buggers. They keep going back and forth. They move this way and that way. There's the true node, which keeps moving a lot, and then there's the mean node, which it's, well, it's an average, so it doesn't move that much. But it's very hard to be specific about it. It's not like we can say at 10 o'clock on this particular day. Unlike other things that are happening on November 6th of 2018, such as Uranus retrograding back into the sign of Aries. That we can do with some precision. The nodes are a little bit trickier. So uh, there's two nodes. There's the north node and there's the south node. Yes, the north node and the south node. Um, and my hand signals are not going to help at all. The, uh, they come in pairs. They're always opposite each other. So if you look at a clock face and you've sort of pictured one node at 1 o'clock, the other one will be at 7. If one was at 3, the other would be at 9. So they're always exactly opposite each other in the zodiac. And so they are now moving on to the Cancer Capricorn axis. They retrograde, which means that instead of coming into 0 degrees of a sign and going forward... They come in from the end of the sign and go backwards. So the node enters at 29 degrees of Cancer Capricorn and then goes back to 15 degrees and so on until it leaves and goes into Gemini. Now the, uh, the two nodes are the, uh, the north node, is sometimes called the dragon's head, and the south node is the dragon's tail. And which of those do you feel like you want to deal with, right? I mean, we're talking about a dragon here. The, uh, the basics of it, a little bit of an oversimplification, but, you know, that's fine for this purpose, is that the south node is kind of what we're pulled towards as a sort of default programming, and the north node is what we aspire to, or what we're encouraged to aspire to. If it sounds like the south node has a bit of an advantage, it does. It, it's, sort of, it's sort of a sink. It's sort of the drain that, you know, you fall towards the south node. You have to climb up to the north node. And so the North Node is sort of the, the better, more fulfilling option, but the South Node is sort of the more enticing option. Now, these things do have repercussions for us as individuals, depending upon where it goes through your chart, what aspects it makes with your planets, and so on. Um, particularly if you have planets in the sign of Cancer or Capricorn, it'll be particularly important. But the, the nodes have a very strong collective vibe. Uh, the nodes will be in the Cancer Capricorn. They spent about 18 months in the sign, so they'll be in Cancer Capricorn until about late June, early July of 2020. So it's some time here. They're leaving the Leo Aquarius axis, where they've been since uh, May of 2017. Uh, now, the way we think about the dragon's head and the dragon's tail, the north node and the south node, is that the, uh, the south node tends to, again, be sort of the default programming, the easier option to take, and it tends to be, ooh, a little bit less developed. You need to address the south node stuff. It's not like you want the south node to go away, but you don't want to get stuck there, and the tendency is to get stuck there. The south node, in this context, often brings out the more difficult or challenging nature of a sign. Um, and the north node encourages us to bring out the better aspect of a sign, the better facets of a sign. So we can look at this a little bit if we go back to uh, 2015 through uh, early 2017 when we had the North Node in Virgo asking us to be of service, asking us to contribute, asking where we can participate for the greater good in society while the south node in Pisces was sort of creating a little bit of a collective fear, a little collective mindset of, gee, things seem very uncertain, we're a little worried, uh, you know, sort of a, a group emotional connection right there, that period 2015 through early 2017. The north node in Leo from about May of 2017 to November of 2018 was saying, hey, where can you be an individual? Where can you stand up and shine? Where can we do things with heartfelt action? And where can we really truly be leaders coming from a, a centered place? And the south node in Aquarius was saying, where do we have group think? Where do we just all kind of go along with the flow and uh, sort of everybody falls in line and, and uh, goes for the sort of the collective answer? 
with Cancer Capricorn, let's start with Capricorn because I think that that's a little bit easier to talk about the South Known in Capricorn. It is going to be a plea for the status quo in terms of our governmental and financial institutions. Uh, that's Capricorn's bailiwick. It's the institutions of power. Um, and so uh, corporations, governments, banks, and all of those things, the, the sense that we need to maintain the status quo, you know, the, the devil that you know type of thing. Just keep on working harder, keep on working with the system, keep on having faith that this has gotten us thus far, it'll get us farther. That's the South Node in Capricorn. Uh, the North Node in Cancer, now this is a tricky one. I gotta tell you, this is a tricky one. I scratch my head to show that it's tricky. The, the, my head didn't really itch, that was a gesture. The North Node in Cancer is a little bit hard. I mean, you know, with a, a great move towards nationalism, the Cancer is the sign of the clan, family, but also the nation, whatever your clan is. And we're seeing a lot of clannishness, we're seeing a lot of nationalism reemerging. Uh, I think the strongest it's been since the Second World War, I believe. Um, and so, you know, it looks like the problematic aspects of cancer are coming out a little bit more than the North Node. And how could how could the North Node positive aspects of cancer manifest? It does seem a little tricky. Uh, I, I think that what we have mostly to deal with in this regard is our, our sense of expanding what that clan is. And going beyond, it's like my family, it's my group here in like my locale, you know, the Long Islanders or whatever, um, or, or, or nationalism. And even perhaps bypassing species and going to sort of a global sense of we're all in this ecosystem together. We are all part of the same ecosystem. We all rise and fall together. We all live by rising and falling. We all live together, and if you know, if if we contaminate the environment, if we decimate the food supply, if we, uh, if we cause ourselves environmental havoc, it affects all of us, and we can't really be talking about this as individuals or even individual groups. So it, it's a new, it's more or less a new way of looking at the sign of Cancer as uh, a, a global community, a global clan, a planetary clan, uh, and realizing the interconnectedness on a biological level. So I think that this is where we have our kind of two poles, you know. We've been doing fine here economically, things are better than ever, you know, we're, we're look, look at the, well, the markets and have and nothing so great lately, but look at look at where we are financially. You know, people are living better in the developed world. In certain sections of the developed world, they're living much better. Let's just keep with the status quo on the one hand. And on the other hand, no, we need to really address ourselves as a global community. Who's going to win? It's not like that. It's not like that. Both sides are going to be strong. Both sides are going to have their moments. And it's just a matter of... Uh, where we where we choose to go and the planets or any astrological factor it sort of describes the way the table is set and to an extent the food that's been cooked what we do in terms of uh, eating it and, and uh, portioning ourselves that's kind of up to us so we're going to see both of these factors we're going to see an increase in both of them i think uranus in taurus is going to be uh, a major factor in terms of recognizing also our global interconnectedness in terms of food and environment and so on but it's not like it's not like the planets are playing sides they they affect a certain amount of transformation and change but you know whether whether it's good for us or not that's uh, that's up to us some key things to watch out for uh, would be uh, in April of 2019 until July of 2019 but particularly April of 2019 now um, that whole thing about Capricorn and the South Node and the status quo. Okay, the problem is that Saturn and Pluto are going through Capricorn. And with Saturn and Pluto going through Capricorn, we are unlikely to see much in the way of status quo. In fact, we all, you know, Pluto's been in Capricorn since 2008, and we already know that the status quo is gravely shaken 
So, you know, it, it may be what we're used to. It doesn't mean by any stretch of the imagination that it's going to continue. I think Saturn and Pluto, Pluto will go through and eat away the structures on its own term. And then Saturn comes and sort of puts things together and does what it can, will sort of patch together what's left or rebuild from the bricks that fall down. And so the status quo is rather unlikely to be maintained uh, in, 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 in any event. Um, but when the node of the moon, the, the south node of the moon, it meets up with Pluto in early April of 2018, and then goes on to hang out with Saturn from the rest of April through July, I think this is the time when we're going to see the greatest, we have to hold on to the status quo. In January of 2020, we have uh, a dramatic meeting of Saturn and Pluto at the end of Capricorn, well, not the very end of Capricorn. Uh, and at the same time, Jupiter will be in the sign and will meet with the south node. So along with April, April to July, but especially April of 2019, January of 2020 looks to be probably the strongest point in time when we're going to have a kind of holding on to the status quo even as it crumbles away. And that's exactly what we're looking at. The status quo, it, it's, not, it's not safe. It's not safe. It's changing. It's going to change. It is in the process. It's obviously changing. We hold on to it tighter, and what happens? At the same time, we hold on to it tight. It falls apart. People react poorly. People react poorly when the status quo is threatened. Um, we all have our point of reacting poorly when the status quo is threatened. You know, uh, you may not be a billionaire power broker, but you know, you know, when your 401k takes a dive or something like that, you know, you react poorly. The status quo is preferable in many senses. So uh, January of 2020 is a point in which we'll be seeing a greater adherence to the status quo, even as it crumbles away. Now, when might we take a more hopeful view of things? When might we say, gee, this is going to be a little bit more of that Cancer North node instead of the Capricorn South node? I really wish the planet Ceres was going through the sign of Cancer at some point in time in the next couple of years, but she will not be until 2021. Um, the, the dwarf planet Ceres, I should say, but I don't like that term. Um, however, from November of 2019 until the end of January 2020, right during this very charged period of time, she will be in the sign of Capricorn. And I feel that Ceres kind of represents, among other things, that energy of that Cancerian uh, where we all are together. Ceres means a lot of things. It means a lot of things in our personal charts. It means a lot of things in the collective. And I'm not sure that the whole Earth Mother thing really does justice to it, but she is associated with the environment through, particularly through things like the food supply. And this is where we're going to see, really, I mean, the, you know, Ceres is the only, uh, Ceres is able to bargain with Pluto and bargain successfully with Pluto. So I think that that's a very hopeful period of time, something that we need to look forward to as being perhaps a hopeful note in this you know, rather south node oriented period of time. Uh, at the other extreme, we have to recognize too, though, that it is on us. It is very much on us. And we can't, you know, it's not what the planets are doing. It's what we're doing with the sort of uh, blueprint that they set up. Uh, it has to do with how we build and how we fill in from that blueprint. And uh, that, that, I mean, that really we are co-creating with them. So it's not really the case that, you know, we are victims of the South Node in Capricorn with, you know, Saturn and Pluto and even Jupiter causing a little trouble. The, the truth of the matter is we don't have to wait for Ceres to come to the rescue. We have to make intelligent choices all along. There are a lot of hopeful things that go along with this nodal shift as well. And we have to recognize those things just in general kind of way. For example, they will be making nice aspects to Neptune in Pisces. And Neptune in Pisces has a lot to do with the immigration and uh, the refugee crisis that we've been dealing with. So we might be having a, a 
a reasonable chance of getting a little bit of relief from this as a crisis. We might be a little bit more inclined towards cooperation and trying to find some workable solutions uh, with the nodes on this axis. Uh, they should also really uh, get a charge from Neptune in general. And Neptune in Pisces is opening us up much more to uh, alternative ways of looking at things, uh, spiritual types of experiences, uh, all of that is something that is growing. And I think that the nodes on this axis are going to be a lot more harmonious than they were on uh, the, uh, the Leo Aquarius axis. I think that we're going to get a little bit more of a boost from, from this particular placement of them. Of course, people that are of the signs of Cancer and Capricorn are going to be feeling this energy most directly. Uh, planets that you have in those signs will be energized to a lesser extent, but probably not insignificantly. When you have placements in Aries and Libra, you'll be feeling it very strongly as well. The other signs are going to be picking up some of the energy, um, but it's going to feel a little bit. It's going to feel a little bit different. The water signs of Scorpio and Pisces, and the Earth signs of Taurus and this is where this is where Taurus is this is where Virgo is Taurus and Virgo will also be getting a, a fair shot of energy but it, it's, it's more subtle it's more subtle uh, it's more direct if you're on the Cancer Capricorn or the Aries Libra axis and a, a hint for you is that the nodes often signify times in your personal life when people come in and go out, it's like the cast of characters change. It's sort of, uh, you know, sort of like a television show that's been on for a while or something like that. There is a flip of the cast of characters. So that's something to look out for uh, during this period of time. Uh, it's, you know, it's neither positive nor negative, and it's not necessarily the most dramatic thing in your life or anything like that. Don't look for people to be dropping dead all around you or, or you know, or, or, or you know, the... Mr. Or Ms. Wright showing up for you or anything like that either, but we often see that there are changes in the people in our lives during the uh, points when the nodes are hitting personal planets. So that's something that you can look forward to, and you can look it up personally. Hey, you can ask an astrologer to take my meaning. All right, I hope this was helpful to you, and I will see you soon.